American artists deserve, you know, a major platform, not only for the presentation of their work, but to debate exactly, you know, what is going on here in the U.S. How is it reflecting the changing global position that the U.S. itself has? In the last few decades, things have really changed quite fundamentally, and the Whitney in particular, as the Museum of Record for American Art in this country, I think its own role is constantly being questioned by the staff here, and I think that's constantly reflected every time the biennial comes along. I was excited by the fact that I'm an artist and I could approach it as an artist would think about bringing together artwork and you know it's artwork and artists who I think about in the studio all the time. These are artists who are giving me challenges, having me think about context, the context of contemporary art. I like working with artists, I like giving artists you know space and platforms with which to do what they do best. I'm not that interested anymore in exhibitions that are just a checklist. I like to see connections between works. The exhibition now is one of the most interesting essay forms that we have, so I'd like to think of this show as a kind of complex essay made in collaboration with all the artists involved. I looked at three themes, one of them being painting by women artists, and you see that here in the space. The second focus would be materiality and affect, and you see that in work that deals with craft, but you also see it in the painting, and in the language of painting and the material of paint. Third, I was thinking about criticality, work that looks at what representation is, critique of media, people who are using appropriation, so a lot of cultural signs. I didn't have like a hardcore premise that goes through everything, but I am always interested in people who have been maybe perhaps a little overlooked, or who have fallen between the cracks. I was trying to keep things that somehow had a reference of like paying attention to like what's around and making something out of details or facts or ways of behaving that are like in front of us that are maybe overlooked. I think one of the first things I was really trying to get my head around is what I've been calling shape-shifting, which is the idea that I think a lot of artists have moved away from the singular image or the singular object and are reflecting a networked world and a digital world. So a lot of the projects are no longer merely multimedia, but involve media that are actually folding into each other, that are kind of morphing. lot of autonomous things and you can see relationships between work you can see juxtapositions but the autonomy of objects is really different than when you are down on the third floor and thinking about Stuart and the slipperiness between authorship and work that collapses in Stuart's floor and with Anthony you know it's language that unites all of that work language is just another thing right like I mean I feel like it's as powerful as paintings or photography or video and language is very important to artists and so I think like, there's a lot of artists who really attune to the kinds of language either that they use in their pieces or that surrounds their pieces. I think we were all interested in artists who've maybe been overlooked and that have maybe been working for sometimes even for decades without a lot of attention. All of us are working with artists who are sort of in love with the building in different ways and sort of trying to respond to it either specifically or just generically. Not generically, but in a more generalized sense, somehow. I mean, it's really interesting now that everything's up to kind of see all the unexpected connections and links and echoes that go not only within each floor, but across the three floors and the whole building. So it's just full of wonderful surprises. <laughs>